Thursday. Menji's in the house. Hello. Good morning, Menji. Uh, so you have been working on a huge project for quite some time now, mm-hmm. and uh, if, if you missed it last hour, we were talking to Menji. Um, he is he he's one of these guys <laughs> at the station who um who's just you ever meet someone who's just gifted and just like goes through life with this incredible gift and he does our videos and all of our you know that kind of stuff here at the station but outside of the station he is a gifted director and filmmaker and he's been working on a documentary now for uh, several years and we've heard little bits and pieces it is now finished and ready for distribution what is the name of your documentary the name is driven the tony pearson story the tony pearson story and thank now, you for that intro that was such a nice intro it's listen it's all true and uh, we talk about you behind your back here uh on how true that is oh, how um, dare you. we're really super super proud of you <laughs> um so uh, tony pearson we talked a little bit last hour about who Tony Pearson is, and it, it's 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 I guess it's about his his life as a bodybuilder, which right. So it's a little bit more than that. So bodybuilding is absolutely a huge part of what his life was, mm-hmm. but the whole documentary actually chronicles his entire life. So where his upbringing was, where he went, how did this whole thing happen? And it's an incredible story. So it's really – you don't need to know anything about the sport. You don't need to know anything about bodybuilding. You don't even need to be into bodybuilding mm-hmm. to actually pick up this documentary and actually see yourself in Tony in I some lo- way. I love this. Okay. Let's – for right now, let's play the trailer. We're so excited because next week it comes out, I think, uh, October 6th is when distribution starts. October 6th at midnight, you're going to have it. On every platform. On every platform, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, wherever right. you get your movies. Let's listen to let's listen to the trailer and then let's talk to Tony. That time they, they stare at you, you know, it's Does that embarrass you to have people feel that way? I was picking cotton at age six on. It's incredibly intense. I have back pain, I think, from that today. It was mandatory that we did. It was brutal. Fear. There's only one word, fear. George Turner would have Tony do things nobody else would do. Nobody would even dream of doing. And Tony would do it because he was he was so hungry to succeed. We saw you at the gym. We wouldn't come near you because your face said don't. For three hours, I'm training every body part. I never said I can't, I won't, I, I don't think I can. There was a tie-in between how well you were known and how much you would win. And Tony did not get a lot of publicity. The writers in the muscle magazines had Ron Tufo set up to win. They closed the curtains on me. The guy who stops posing might lose. I'm not going to stop posing. I came here to finish my routine. And then it hit me. I won. He won it at 20. Tony did. That's a big title. Tony was magic on two feet. The things he did with his body was just magic. He was flowing like a dancer with big muscle. Somebody, I guess, mentioned to Tony that he looked a little like Michael Jackson. It was Michael Jackson with muscles. Driven, the Tony Pearson story, available on digital October 6th. It's like it was yesterday. I was afraid to come back to face it. Are you hooked? I'm hooked. Do you um, want to see this movie? Totally want to see this movie, but first uh, we need to talk to Tony. Uh, Tony, good morning and welcome to the Hometown Morning Show. Uh, how are you doing today? Good morning. Thank you for having me on. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you could hear, I'm hoping you could hear that we played one of the trailers for your film. Uh, that was the first time I heard it, and boy, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> They did an incredible job 
putting putting it together is it's amazing. Tell us a little bit. Menji's here. You know Menji. Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs> they call me Menji over here. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> how- he knows me as Andrew, but uh, yeah, they call me Menji over here at the radio station. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. Andrew okay. is here. Andrew Menjivar is here, um, otherwise known as Menji here at the station. Uh, w- we want to know a little bit. Uh, he he knows all the background, but I know nothing. So uh, what what I've learned so far is that you've had this amazing uh, driven challenge in your life that brought you into uh, bodybuilding and had this amazing career. If you could encapsulate what you think this documentary takes us to, what point this takes us to, what would you say, Tony? It's, you know, it's not just about bodybuilding and, you know, the fitness world are going to go, they're going to think that, but it's for everybody. You know, it's, it's a real story, down-home story. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, and, you know, in the 1957 in the Deep South and the Civil Rights and uh, being African-American and very poor without a mom, without dad. So it was a struggle for me, you know, just to survive from one day to the next. And it took me 40 years to decide to write my story because I was so embarrassed about it. But you can't, you know, you can't choose your life. It it is what it is. But I started writing it, and as as a recovery for me, you know, it was the best thing I ever done. Because the days that was painful, I had to write. I was crying the whole time. And the other days, was a good day when I'm writing, when entitled to something, then I was, that was a good day. But I wrote this because I, I said, hey, maybe I could help some other people, like kids or adults that have going through issues that have a lot of things pent up. And I just wanted to let all that out because in, in the fitness world, I was, you know, Mr. America, Mr. Universe, and all this stuff. But in my head, in my heart, I was... This, this guy, this shy kid, lost, um, lonely, poor, and every time I won a title, it meant nothing to me because I just didn't feel I was worthy. Yeah, but and- I said, well, if I could help some people to express themselves, tell their story, it's going to heal them. Yeah, and what what Tony is referring to right there is uh, his book, Driven: My Secret Untold Story. So he actually has a memoir that the documentary takes a lot of the foundational uh, mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. from, and we kind of adapt it into the documentary itself. Um, so the documentary doesn't necessarily go into the full detail, but it, they really complement each other, the book and the documentary. So if you really want – you see the documentary and you really want to know a lot of the detail that we didn't go over, Driven My Secret Untold Story on Amazon – really goes into a lot of that detail. And it's incredible because every single chapter of that book is almost written like a movie scene. It's really engaging, and it's it's really a powerful story. Tony, when you, when you were writing the book, and then um, obviously the book came first, and then th- your film uh, came second, were, were these tools cathartic in 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 a way or um i mean did you write the book and you said oh i got it out and now you know i've cried i've smiled and then you were kind of you know okay and then you know these filmmakers come along and they go wait a second we want to <laughs> now we want to do this all over again only on film and were you were you skeptical at first were you kind of like oh no i just did this in a book should i do this again am i going to cry am i going to smile where were you as far as emotions well after the book came out i was i was done with it like you said i felt good about myself i'm, I'm clean i came clean with my story Uh, But then when the movie came out, you know, I was like, oh, my God. You know, we flew back to Memphis, Tennessee. I went to all those places where all this drama took place. So I had to relive it, you know, on on site. Mm -hmm. And it was very tough days filming that. Mm -hmm. You know, the shack that I grew up in and Memphis, down in Memphis, and then going to St. Louis. Uh, It was very challenging. I mean, who gets to go back? to those places, those moments in time, and it all comes back to you like it was yesterday. So it was... And there it, it is. Was, it was inter- there it, was it is on intense. film to uh, share with the entire world now. Yeah, and if I could add to that, um, you know, it's not an easy thing, especially the first moments of the documentary where we go to Memphis, where we go to St. Louis. 
those are I describe as probably some of the darkest parts of the movie because of the the, the topics that we have to go over, mm-hmm. and so it really it it goes into a, a deep and dark place, and you know Tony had to have a lot of trust in both me and you know us as a crew to make sure that we were doing justice, and you know it because it's an uncomfortable place to go back to. It's a really uncomfortable place. But I felt that it was necessary to make, you know, the audience feel a bit uncomfortable because it does pay off in the end. You have to understand where you're coming from and then how somebody got to that um, place, you know, that successful place. That's amazing. Um, did you, Tony, did you when, you, when you met the crew and they said, hey, guess what? We're going to relive all this stuff. Uh, and what, 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 what were your first thoughts? What were your th- first thoughts? Did you go, did you, did you jump at the chance or did you go, whoa, 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 hold on a second. I kind of jumped at the chance. I, you know, I wasn't thinking clearly. <laughs> it came on so fast. You know, he filmed me, you know, here in Vegas. And then all of a sudden we're going to be taking a trip down to Memphis and going to St. Louis. And, you know, and I, and I, I just kind of went along with it. But once I arrived there, that's when it really hit me because the church was sitting on top of the hill. I was went to church every Sunday there, and um, that same road, that bridge. I was standing on that bridge, and it was just it just it was just like yesterday. It was just oh my god! And then there's a basketball court, and the basketball was sitting in the, in the yard, like waiting for me to shoot in through the hoop. <laughs> I mean, it's like forty years has passed, and. Um, it's funny how things stay with you and you still have the same emotions, you know, all after those years. You think you you, you healed yourself, but you didn't heal yourself. Now you that, have to let it out. Just, now that, you know, Tony, just, yeah. now that you've written the book, now that you've done the film, and one of the first things you said as we opened up the interview was that, you know, you, you hope that maybe it will touch someone and help them if they have struggled as you have struggled. After doing a yeah. book and a and a film, you you must really be at that point in your life where please, I hope this helps someone. Oh, absolutely, yes. You know, I'm a little bit nervous about it because I don't know how people are going to take it. Or I had a few friends who kind of skimmed through the book and they threw the book away because I don't want to go there. So in other words, they didn't want to touch their own emotions. You know, things. I think there's something there's, there's something in the book that relates to everyone. Mm-hmm. So there's something you can pick up from this book. And it's not just body I just want people to know this is for everybody, you know, adults, children. Um, I think the time now, people are in a lot of trouble and kids are in trouble doing drugs and alcohol. They're, they're, they're trying to escape from their own, you know, their own pain. But you have to face it. You have to come clean. Well, that's why they threw the book away, t- uh, Tony, uh, is because they didn't want to face it. But hopefully... We can. Hopefully you can teach us through your book and through this film that it is cathartic to face some of these challenges we have in life and then we can overcome them. You have to, you know, as they say, the first step is to just know that you have these issues and challenges. You have to accept that. And then how do we deal with it? Uh, Throwing the book away and not dealing with it. I'm not quite sure that's the way to go. However, having said that, if you are interested Go on. Uh, I'm assuming Amazon has your book, uh, Driven. Yeah. Okay. It's on Amazon. Yeah. Go on Amazon. Get get the book. Let's get ready for the premiere next week. It is uh, October sixth. October sixth, Friday. Friday, October sixth. It will be on uh, streaming platforms, and hopefully, we can get you in studio and uh, meet you in person. I would really love the opportunity to discuss this more, Tony. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the Hometown Morning Show with Andrew Menjivar discussing this film, which we are also excited about here at the station, and just in, in general here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, thank you for taking the time and talking with us. Please come in studio. Can you do that for me? Yes, I can. I will. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Excellent. We're going to coordinate that, uh, Tony. Thank you so much for sharing just a, a fraction of your story this morning. We're going to get into it more. Hopefully we can get you in studio. You have a great rest of your week, Tony, okay? Okay. You too. Thank you. Uh-huh. Menji. Hi. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? Wow. Yeah. So it gets even better. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to throw this out there. You can pre-order that movie right now. So if you go on Apple TV, if you've got an uh-huh. iPhone or Apple TV, sure do. Uh, just type in Driven Tony Pierce.